talk a little bit about the, actually, the non-existent rice plant hopper. <laughs> we did not find it last year at all, not sing one single specimen. But, uh, okay, so, um, like Cliff said, uh, we first found it in 2015, and uh, Cliff called me, and he said, I've got some kind of leaf hopper or plant hopper, something sucking the juices out of my plants. This was on the second crop in Brazoria County. And so we took a trip down there and, you know, I collected some specimens. This was in 2015. And, uh, and then I thought, oh, it looks like a plant hopper. And the one plant hopper that I know is a rice delphacid or plant hopper, which is native to Central America and causes a lot of damage down there. And then back in, before I came on board, this was actually in the 50s or 60s. <laughs> There was an uh, infestation of plant hoppers, rice plant hoppers in the south at that time. And I'm not sure how many years it went on. It was probably two or three years. And then it suddenly disappeared. But uh, so this was in, say, September, late August of 2015 when we went down there. And uh, Cliff showed you a picture of the field. And I've got more pictures here. But it was horrible. I mean, uh, I'm try not to alarm the farmers and whatnot. You don't want to do that. But it was literally, you know, we were picking up three to five hundred bugs per five sweeps. And, and it was throughout the field. And uh, this was um, Presidia. It was Presidia. And uh, it, it occurred right before harvest. How, how long before harvest, Cliff? Maybe two weeks? Ten days? A little bit long. Okay. So it was well headed. And it was throughout the whole field. And then we started to, uh, you know, inspect other fields. And it only occurred on the west side of Houston. We didn't see it on the east side. But every field we went into, regardless of variety, you know, it was there in high numbers. And so we estimated, you know, where it was left uncontrolled. Well, it was always uncontrolled because we didn't have anything registered for it at that time. And it was so late in the season. But we were maybe 20 percent loss in yield on the on the second crop so we began bi-weekly sampling oh it does have uh it's a grass feeder and it's got piercing sucking mouth parts so it causes hopper burn when you get those type of populations that high it just sucks the juices out of the plant and then the plant dies but then it also uh, has the ability to transmit a virus which causes hoa blanca which means white leaf in spanish and so you know, I didn't know what that looked like. We went on the internet and I got some, although I was, let me back up, I was in Costa Rica a number of years ago and I did see it down there, but I wasn't that interested in it because we didn't have the bug up here. But it had affected uh, uh, rice early in the season and it basically killed the rice. But the leaves turn white, there's uh, rosetting of the plant, you know, it doesn't tiller. So, so it, it, the, 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 uh, the direct feeding plus the virus can be a, a big problem. But anyway, we, so we started bi-weekly sampling in Brazoria County and Colorado County. And then if a farmer called up, this was in two, uh, 2016, and we started right away in the fall of 2015. And we've done, you know, we're still doing it. And again, we haven't found a single specimen. And I just can't believe <laughs> that that thing has disappeared based on how widespread and how uh, abundant those populations were. So I feel, personally, I might be wrong, but I think that there's probably really, really low populations on alternate hosts. Ryegrass is an uh, alternate host. There are other grasses where it's uh, like undetectable levels that we just, you know, we can't find. I just can't believe that every single bug, you know, died over the winter. So. Uh, so we're continuing, uh, continuing to sample throughout the rice belt, and then when farmers call and they're uh, suspicious of something happening in the field, usually it's a fertility problem or a disease problem. And that's what we found in 2016, or uh, yeah, in 2016. So this is what it looks like. Um, th these aren't real good pictures, but you see that little spine right there? That's what makes it a plant hopper. And, uh, this is real characteristic. The nymph has those two 
brown stripes on the abdomen and uh, you know and here here's the adult here uh, and like I said well we've got a picture and this is on uh, Cliff and Wade's combine you know they were just everywhere uh, and this is a shot uh, from another crop consultant uh, you can see they're just hundreds of bugs you know on that on that single rice plant and it was typical throughout the whole field and this shows the field this is Cliff's field the whole field was affected but you can see where the populations were higher in these spots here but every plant out there right Cliff you know had bugs on it and there's a shot of a real uh, real severely infested field and then also uh, the plant hoppers they release or they excrete a honeydew you know, that sticky substance sweet substance substance and then there's a, a sooty mold fungus that grows on it and so it'll cause the foliage uh, superficially to be black and we saw a lot of that and then here are some of the spots in the field where there was absolutely you know no harvest but or no yield but you can see also all of the the entire field was affected it was just some places affected more than others and we didn't see any um, pattern in the field you know it wasn't like close to the woods or you know it was just throughout the whole field and then we did a non replicated because it was so close to the end of the season and uh, so we looked at these uh, these compounds here and uh, basically you know, these were, this was a small plot, like five feet by 30 feet. And so there was just so many insects that they would, I, this is a horrible test. <laughs> it's a bad test. And it just overwhelmed uh, the products. Uh, but you can see, I, I think maybe the pyrethroids, they might, you know, increase the problem, like karate, Mustang Max, and so forth. So we got to be... You know, if we do see this in the future, we've got to be careful with the pyrethroids. And then here was another non-replicated test uh, where this was a uh, uh, larger application, a uh, larger area. And uh, we looked at orthene, and of course orthene, uh, it did really well. But the chances of labeling orthene, I guess, is not in its net. Not going to happen. Not probably going to happen. But, uh, but then Tenshu, which is labeled for rice stink bug, it did a, you know, a pretty decent job. Not great, but... So anyway, we haven't had a chance to do any more uh, research. And I don't want to bring the... You know, I don't want to introduce the bug. I didn't want to introduce the bug from the west side over to the east side to do any testing. Uh, didn't want to take the plants in, in case they were uh, infected with the virus. So, uh, so anyway... Oh, and here's another shot. This is, uh, this is just various counties that we found the bug in in 2015. Different varieties, and this is the number of plant hoppers per five sweeps. It wasn't replicated. Basically, you know, regardless of variety or location west of Houston, we were having problems. Mo, did you count those? Pardon me? Did you count those? I helped. <laughs> 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 you get, well, <laughs> what we, <laughs> that's kind of like sugar cane. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. Six, One, two, three. You know, well, what, what we did. <laughs> no, no, what, okay. Let, let me back up. What we did is we, we uh, collected in bags. We put them in bags okay. and then we froze okay. them and then later okay. on. So okay. that, that's, that's how we came up with these numbers. Okay. Kind of like the sugar cane, Avery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so the take-home message is it's every, you know, it was everywhere. So, can anyone riddle me this? Why isn't, why didn't we find any this year? You know, the, as far as, Patrick? Is, is there any known beneficial in a rice field that would typically keep those things uh, at low enough levels to where you weren't seeing them? Cliff? Here was the thing I think helped flare. There's no doubt in my mind we flare but that rice was with, uh, for $6 with, premium. Okay. We sprayed it with carotid when we put out a fungicide. Prior. Automatic, just automatic? Automatic threw in Lambda because it was contracted and it had to be under point and a half peck. And so we just threw some in there when we went over it. For rice stink There's bug. no doubt in my mind we flared them. Yeah. But in the severe fields yesterday, we found uh, Ladybug larvae found I think spiders. 
Yeah, there's a there's oh, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that'll fade on, you know, but nothing's <laughs> going to keep them under control. That, with those high pollen, populations, unless it's a, a fungus, unless you had some kind of fungus or a, or something like that, a virus coming in. You know. Good a question. I mean, yeah. Put in low, and you walked in that field. You had to put a handkerchief over your nose. Yeah. Yeah. And then the same year, I got a video from a, uh, a farmer in uh, Nicaragua, and he showed me a video, and it was taken at night. He had his four-wheeler going around the field, and Man Manolo Poros, I think some of you guys know him. And anyway, um, the light on the four-wheeler was attracting bugs, and I, you couldn't even see him because of the bugs, you know. So it was a bad year in 2015 in Central America also. So it was a bad year down there too? Yes. Okay, so... If, if there would have been a virus or a fungus, you, you would have you would have seen it. Okay. You mean on the insect? Yeah, we we did not we didn't we didn't see that, Gus. Yeah. I, so I doubt I doubt it's a, it must be something as simple as environmental conditions. Yeah, that's you know that's the only thing, Patrick. When did you say you went to Costa Rica? Oh, this. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a, well, you know, yeah. That's exactly yeah, I was. We had test uh, test plots at Eagle Lake uh, field day, you know, in in, uh, in 2016 uh, for this deal, and uh, we had a sign out there that said uh, uh, Rice Delfacid Research, and the farmers, you know, they're saying, "What you bringing in Delfacid? You know, those rice plant hoppers here?" So to do research, so so that's we kind of have our hands tied on 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 what we can do but so I, I don't know I still think that there's there's got to be some like undetectable levels of, of these critters out there somewhere you know I think if you looked hard enough for them you'd find you probably you're probably right and we are sampling uh, we're sampling fallow fields uh, cliffs fields uh, that was in there was a field next door that was in ryegrass that he had the cows on we were sampling that so we still haven't, you know, found anything. But, but if y'all are farmers or crop consultants, if you see anything suspicious, uh, let me know. So, so I think I'm. So ready. they didn't get they didn't get anywhere, even remotely close to Louisiana or Arkansas or anything. No. Like that. Now the, it was almost like Houston was a barrier. Yeah. Everything south and west of Houston, nothing on the east what side. What thing do if it got loose up in Arkansas with all our acres? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's so like I I've told the farmers I don't want to. We've always managed to you know regardless of what introduced pest we have we've always managed to control them right guess somehow through That's cultural yes. insecticides you know we're so good at it too. or we've gotten better at it. <laughs> so so what I'm planning to do is uh, I just have a couple of more minutes here. Uh, what I'm planning to do is, and I was talking to Cliff about this, Cliff might want to go with me, but I've made some contacts in uh, uh, Central America, and, and then I've got a couple of cooperators up at A&M that are vi virologists, which I'm not, and uh, again, we can't bring those live specimens or live plants up here, so we're going to have to try to do that research there. At least I want to find out, you know, what that virus looks like. I want to learn more about the you know the insects so uh, we've got uh, through the USRPA uh, I've, I know uh, farmers in the Guanacaste region in Costa Rica and they've said we can come down there in May and June take a look at the fields because it's there all year you know May and June is usually the time they say is when it's most prevalent and then there's some Nicaraguan farmers you know that uh, we've made uh, contacts with and then uh, do you all know Julio Castillo with Rice, Rice Tech he's from Panama and so, uh, you know, so we have contacts there. Uh, Mondo, did you have a question? I just want to say, with that high a number of uh, hopper like that, of course, it's not an aphid, but aphid generally you know, gets a virus. And I would have thought that that high number is that honey. You said it produces a honeydew as well. Right. And you would have thought that it would get a virus. What, what do you mean to get a virus? Uh, not a virus, virus mean, uh, a plant virus? Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they, those, those things are known to carry virus. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I didn't mean that. 
You mean a biocontrol? Yes. Okay, yeah, like Gus was saying. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'm playing more towards a fungus probably than yeah. a fungus yeah. virus. Well, yeah, in fact, I was at but the art. That, that still wouldn't re remove the fact that he can't find any. Right. Well, I mean, true. even at low levels. You know, it's just crazy. Uh, at the RTWG, I was uh, talking to some Nicaraguans, uh, some scientists, and they they are using uh, Bovaria, Bassiana, uh, which is a fungus that they say is is doing some pretty good job. But they claim resistant varieties, and but I think they're still getting hammered, you know. By and they, I'm not sure what the. That's what I need to go down there is to learn more about it as far as their management and try to bring that information up here and then maybe do some some actual virology work down there maybe with I haven't simit uh, you know not uh, simit siot in Colombia where they might have these ultra centrifuges that the virologists might so at least we might be able to find out where this thing originated you know was it in well you know Honduras or Guatemala or you know in Mexico and uh, Patrick is this the first time that y'all have seen this insect in the United States? Has it been looked? I, I have never seen it before, uh, but like I said, back in the 50s, late 50s and early 60s, there was it was found. I think it was in Mississippi, Louisiana, yeah, uh, Florida. Yeah, there is a potential there. There's a history. Yeah, and there was a bunch of work that they were. If you go back to the RTWG proceedings. Back way back then, you'll see there there's, was a lot of work that they were doing. So it, it was. It was seen here. Back then. Yeah. Uh, global warming, man. Well, I'm just wondering. Who knows? Maybe it was a situation <laughs> like uh, Asian soybean rust. You know, we never had it, and then come to find out it came uh, from the southern, southern areas uh, on hmm. the heels of, of basically hurricane. See, it could, there was uh, in 2015 there was a storm that went through Mexico, kind of an unusual storm that went through Central America and Mexico from the Pacific side and kind of went up our direction. And I so, think that's how sugar cane got here too. That we got that they were dealing with. Well, fortunately, that this thing here wasn't on the select agent list like uh, Asian soybean rust was at the time. What would that have meant? I uh, mean, that would have meant the FBI would have shown up. And oh, I see. They would have looked at uh, agro-terrorism, because that's what happened here in Baton Rouge. Really? Well, Glenn Crane, his L.A. son, uh -huh. uh, said that they had them in the late 50s. Nobody was around that knew that they lost crops 100% didn't put a combine out there. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard. Now, I don't. We don't have any better around. It can happen again. It could happen. Yeah. I, they have a couple of three yeah. years. And you might, you know, with more erratic storms, I don't know whether you believe in climate change or anything like that, but it, like you said, you know, there it might be that. And then we there's more. An awfully mild winter this year. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. and last year, too. So, anyway. And we, real wet two years in a row. Real, real wet years. Yeah. So. Okay, I think that's it. So, uh, you got any more questions for Cliff? Or and be sure to write if you want those CEUs. You know, be sure to to sign up for those. So, all righty.